Hello and welcome to News Click. The Narendra Modi for PM campaign is yet to seriously start rolling, but some pros and cons have already started emerging. To discuss these, we have with us today senior journalist Seema Mustafa. Welcome to News Click, Seema. Thanks. The uh, campaign to project Narendra Modi as PM, uh, as I was saying, we haven't yet seen the campaign truck rolling in that sense. But some elements of the campaign, the pros raised on behalf of Modi by the BJP and the cons raised by many others uh, have started emerging. So I'd like to discuss some of those with you uh, today. And let me begin by the biggest asset which the BJP thinks it has in projecting Narendra Modi uh, as a candidate is his so-called strong leadership qualities and his developmental leadership that he has provided in uh, Gujarat. What is your assessment of this as to how strong uh, a selling point are these? I think we have to go back to 2001, early 2002 to really understand. You remember Narendra Modi at that time, he was quite a washed out leader. Uh, he was, uh, even the BJP thought he was going to lose the elections. His performance in Gujarat was not something that they were all crying uh, themselves hoarse about. And then suddenly this pogrom happened in 2000 or Muslims were killed in Gujarat. And he emerged from those ashes as it were, from that violence with an entirely new image, a new avatar of this man who means business, he used the terrorizing capabilities of himself and the goons that he had collected around himself and who he allowed full play in Gujarat. He used that to establish himself first as a leader who nobody questioned because everybody was terrified of him, including people from his own party, as we all know. I mean, people have died from the BJP as well in Gujarat. And then he he, he asserted himself, he pulled back the goons to some extent and then the development mantra started where he hired PR firms and he got the support of the corporate class and suddenly emerged on the scene as this man, this messiah of development uh, with nobody questioning that how do you talk about development when you're denying it to a large section of your own people. And um, uh, and even in the development in this, in, you know, and the economists tell us that um, he is definitely far lower than he would like to project. Sure. So you don't think as a selling point these are particularly strong uh, agendas that the BJP could project for Modi outside Gujarat? Well, they thought that they are strong. Uh, there are two things here. One is that the BJP itself knows that it is, it is now a faction-ridden party. It's a party without an agenda. It is a party without a convincing leadership after Atal Bihari Vajpayee. So suddenly it has realized that it is not going to improve its position in the elections at all. In fact, maybe become worse. So only chance that it has is in projecting this leader as the new leader, the new face, the new man of the masses, the Gujarat, Akhand Bharat, uh, you know, visible um, symbol. But the second part is that the BJP and its front organizations themselves are not very clear what they should project. So you can see this tussle between the Hindutva brigade and between the so-called development. Because as you were saying, there has also been this disquiet inside the BJP about Modi's candidature. And there have been these not so subtle uh, comments from various BJP leaders about the good track record of the Chief Minister of Madhya Pradesh yes. and the Chief Minister of Chhattisgarh and LK Advani and, himself and contrasting <laughs> those with the leadership in Gujarat. So it's not as if that has emerged as a very outstanding selling point for Modi either. No, it hasn't. And also, um, uh, you know, you, you find that uh, they decided that they would begin the campaign or they would at least launch some part of the campaign from uh, Ayodhya, from the Babri Masjid. Then you find that Modi didn't go there because that would 
give and galvanize I mean take away from his development image so that confusion you can still sense and you have a very good idea of how there's this tussle and all these two streams are really fighting each other uh, it seems to me that there is a flip side to the strong leadership coin uh, and that is uh, one of the major strengths of Atal Bihari Vajpayee when he led the NDA government was that he was seen as the most flexible and accommodating face of the BJP and thereby able to forge a broad alliance in the NDA. Now that does not square with this uh, projected image of Narendra Modi as this macho. lone ranger, macho, one person going ahead uh, yeah. with anything. So there seems to be a contradiction there as well. And for the first time, Raghu, for the first time you find that the entire BJP and even the RSS, they've sort of got into this whole personality cult in a much worse way than even the Congress. I mean, they're talking of Modi as if that is it. You know, there is no party, there is no organization, there is none of the agenda that the BJP used to take pride in, even if it was a Hindutva agenda. Now it's Modi and Modi and more Modi. I think they're really, really digging a hole for themselves in every which way. And as a party, uh, whether the country survives or not, if the Modi becomes the Prime Minister, which I don't think will happen, but I don't think the BJP will quite survive it. The strong leadership argument about uh, Modi also be, seems to be taking a bit of a knock with these daily revelations we hear with the Israt Jahan uh, case, because apart from the other dimensions of that case, which I'm sure we will discuss, there is also this dimension of a state administration which is unaccountable, which seems to think it can get away with uh, anything and able to run amok, uh, if you like. What's your perception of how, of what we are witnessing on this Isra Jahan case? Yes, I think, you know, this, this is one case that has gone and has the capacity or the capability of going very, very close to Modi. Because it involves the Gujarat police at a time when Amit Shah was there, at the time when, uh, of course, the chief minister was in complete control. And it is obviously part of an underground operation that was being run by the IB. Isha Jah herself, a 19-year-old girl, had got involved with this Javed Sheikh, but she herself whether she was innocent or not. I think one mistake that is being made right now by civil rights activists is by say, you know, insisting on her innocence. She was innocent. I mean, a 19-year-old is automatically innocent in the sense that she's a victim of manipulations, of the machinations of all these gory people. But the point is not that. The point is that there was an encounter that in broad daylight, in cold blood, conducted and carried out by the Gujarat police, which was directly under the Home Minister of Gujarat, which was a very close crony of the Chief Minister of Gujarat, and they were shot dead. Now, you, this has been confirmed. This has been confirmed by the CBI, it has been confirmed by the police uh, uh, and police statements that they got directives to kill these people in cold blood. And that's the story that should be chased, because this is going to make uh, Modi sweat. Unfortunately, they managed to entangle even the civil rights activists in this IB versus CBI and all the other paraphernalia uh, surrounding the case rather than the case itself. Because uh, right now we are going through, the country is going through this big debate on the autonomy of the CBI and so on. And the BJP, because it's in opposition now, yeah. finds a lot of merit in that argument, even though when they were in power, of they course. similarly used the CBI like every ruling party uh, has done. Uh, but in this case, you've got a collusion with the IB and the BJP today blames the CBI for uh, blaming this. And this again seems to me to speak of the strong leadership concept, which means you're a person who is leading and therefore can manipulate all state institutions the way you like, in this case, the IB. Absolutely. And how can these people move away? How can Narendra Modi or Amit Shah and others who were there at the time controlling events just pretend that they don't, un uh, don't know about the number of encounters that the Gujarat police carried out? 
uh, they've been you know they've all been sort of they've all surfaced from time to time there's been a lot of excitement there have been uh, cases registered and it is almost now a known fact that the Gujarat police was directed to conduct these encounters sure. so he has to be held responsible and Ishra Jahan case is something that is like I said earlier is taking the whole story very very close to the chief minister if the focus remains on the encounter and doesn't move into extraneous issues like the IB and the CBI. Right. And if at all we want to talk about autonomy to investigative agencies and intelligence agencies like the CBI or the IB, then that applies as much to the Congress as it does to the BJP and as much to the central government as it does to state governments. Absolutely. And if you're pressing for autonomy, you should be seen to be uh, acting autonomously as well, yes. which doesn't Ab seem to be the which case. Which isn't yeah. the case here at all, absolutely. And, uh, unfortunately, I have not seen much of that being raised uh, no. in the discussions. No, I think the whole discussion has uh, gone issue. a little awry. Or, and I think if somebody is smiling at the moment, it's probably Narendra Modi and his cronies, because they find that the pressure, instead of coming back on them, is again moving away. That's right. As to whether or not there is terrorism and so yes. on and so forth. Uh, which brings me to another uh, issue, which is long been seen as the Achilles heel of the Modi uh, campaign. The prime reason why uh, Chief Minister of Bihar has broken away from the NDA uh, and that is uh, Narendra Modi's administration and the pogrom in Gujarat in the aftermath of the Godra uh, incident. Uh, but the BJP's uh, defense on this question has uh, revolved around two planks. One has been, how long will you keep harping on one incident which has taken place? And the second is, well, if there was a pogrom in Gujarat, there was also the anti-Sikh riots uh, in Delhi for which the Congress is responsible. How do you see this unfolding in the months to come? Well, I think, you know, this is something that the BJP decided right at the beginning. And every time the Congress opens its mouth, they hit it with 1984. So the point is again, you know, they're making it a Congress BJP fight. I think the fight is between secular and communal India. And it, uh, not by the manipulators and by those who twist politics, but, you know, a direct fight between secular and... Um, and I think positions were taken by secular India in 1984 against the pogrom uh, of the Sikhs in Delhi. Uh, 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 justice was demanded to some extent, not to the extent that it should have been, a little bit was dispensed. And every single sane person and political party and organization condemned the violence from the rooftops. Sure. So now to bring this up and justify as if by killing 2000 Sikhs and keeping quiet there is justifying the killing of Muslims, this is another incident. That's right. and, and, and justice there has still not been done. Quite right. And whatever the arguments against the Congress's role, large part of society, civil society at large, large number of activists and political forces, as strongly condemned Absolutely. the 1984 Sikh riots and continue to be involved in yes. prosecuting those cases yes. as uh, with the uh, pogrom in Gujarat. Absolutely. And the players are different. Uh, uh, it's a different uh, state. It's a different carnage. And there have been so many and you have to fight for each one of them by saying because somebody was let off in one murder means Therefore that the other one is innocent. It doesn't. But that's it means usually. the other is also a killer and has to be tried. That's right. And if you, you have to learn from the mistakes of maybe the first to make sure that nobody gets away in the second. Sure. But that's always been the BJP's... Uh, uh, tactic in responding is, to these charges is, is to throw it back on the Congress. If it was just the BJP, we could handle it. Unfortunately, it's sections of the media as well. That's right. And there is that right polity, you know, as it were, which comes in and gives this argument. I find perfectly sane persons trying to excuse Modi on this. I feel that today, when you're in this position, anybody who says that you can vote for a person just on the development um, a mantra, uh, forgetting what he has done in his past is really condoning the violence of 2002. I think everybody, every corporate honcho who is supporting Modi is basically supporting the violence of 2002. Uh, Seema, uh, let me come back to where we started. Uh, and that is for some, to my mind, yet to be explained reason, 
the Modi caravan uh, for the 2014 election does not really seem to have picked up momentum uh, yet. Uh, you hinted that this was because of some uncertainty as to the uh, plank on which the BJP wants to stand for these elections, how that is uh, unfolding. That's one dimension. Is there another dimension also which is anxiety about the candidature of Narendra Modi himself? Of course, there is that anxiety. There is, um, there, uh, there is anxiety within the old leadership of the BJP itself, which feels that the party would change with this kind of uh, uh, prime minister. And they're not very sure what kind of impact it would have on that whole agenda of Hindutva uh, uh, forces as you know they might but I have another I have a third theory which if you watch the man very closely which is Narendra Modi uh, it is becoming increasingly visible that he's very very uncomfortable outside Gujarat he is become he has reached a certain macho kind of nationalist Gujarati kind of level within the state but every time he ventures outside there is discomfort which is visible. I mean, he does stupid things like in Uttarakhand, suddenly declaring that he has saved all the Gujaratis when, you know, the floods were not differentiating between Gujaratis and UP Walas or whatever, you know. So that really didn't work well for him in the rest of the country. His, he is a very rehearsed human being. He has taught himself his politics. He comes out in a rehearsed manner. Right. He makes that speech and, and he goes, goes away. He doesn't stop for journalists to question him because he doesn't have answers to questions. He only has that rehearsed speech. And that rehearsed speech is still not being able, uh, one or two, you know, whenever he's prepared for things, he comes out with those big speeches as, you know, at the um, uh, various, University, yeah, university so etc. But otherwise, his contribution uh, is impromptu appearances are very lackluster. So I really don't know whether the man is going to be able to manage. And the fourth thing that works apart from all that you said against him is, f again, the party BJP has been isolated. So he himself will have to deliver 200 plus seats for the BJP, for the BJP to at least have some chance in forming the government. Um, I remember when the National Front government was there and L.K. Advani came into the BJP office where we were all waiting for him. And he sort of passed by and asked him something and he turns around and he says, you know, you people are isolating the BJP and I'm going to tell you we're going to end this isolation. And they work to end the isolation and they form the NDA government. Sure. Now they're back to that status quo because nobody wants to be sitting on the same table as Modi. So all these factors together have taken that, you know, what you say, that fizz out of his campaign so at the, the more, moment. So the more uh, the BJP projects Modi, the more Modi is projected, the less becomes the importance of the BJP as a factor. As a factor. And the other, uh, the last, uh, I mean, one uh, point, I think the danger, uh, you know, the danger is that Modi himself uh, uh, has assumed this very larger than life image. Everything is around Modi. Yeah. His authoritarianism is now being felt by people outside Gujarat. And there is a great deal of discomfort. I don't know whether the party is going to be able to support him in the manner that he hopes. Thank you very much, Seema, for this very interesting discussion. I'm sure we'll have occasion to come back and discuss these and related events soon. Thank you. Thank you.